Welcome back, movie fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, where the movies are poo. How do you feel about that one? Is that one beneath us? <laughs> I think it's pretty solid. I, <laughs> I, I, you... I was trying to come up with... I was trying to come up with something about, like, you know, a bear of very little brains, but I couldn't come up with anything, so I'm like, ah, the movies are poo, fuck it. Yeah, why not? Uh, <laughs> when are you going to get to do that again? And Winnie the Pooh is pretty innocent, so I don't think, I don't think he'll show back up here. <laughs> Unless there's a sequel, which actually I think there fucking is. <laughs> I, I'm your host, Matt Presents, and I am joined, as always, by my mean co-host. Hello, my name is Mike Finch. Uh, if I wanted to be really accurate to the movie, I would have shouted at the top of my lungs, but I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm not feeling that today. Not feeling that joke that they forced into the movie two times either. Fair enough. Uh, yes, for, for our Christmas episode this year, we're doing, uh, you, you know, children's cartoon, but a slasher movie. It's The Mean One versus Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Which is, of course, named after Revolver Blood and Honey, my favorite Texas beer. No. Oh. So that's what, like, Winnie the Pooh was drooling out throughout the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I will say I do find it very funny that the Grinch has managed to make it onto our Christmas special twice now. And I'm saying, just saying, next year, you're, this Matt, you're the one who makes the decisions, but we could go three for three with that Illumination Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> I... Unfortunately, I already have the perfect matchup for next Christmas. Nah. Uh, all right, Grinch, you're off but, the hook. <laughs> maybe, maybe someday we will see Illuminations of the Grinch. I don't know why I'm asking for that. <laughs> like, I'm asking for it so we could do three to three, but I don't. I really don't want to watch that. The Lorax is legitimately one of my least favorite movies, and that probably would be what gets paired with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was home in Texas recently, and I smuggled home a couple Revolver Blood and Honeys, and I, I saved my last one for this. So I got a nice glass of Revolver Blood and Honey with me. Is it is it actually a good beer? Yeah, it's it's. I said it was my favorite Texas beer. I wasn't sure if you were just my saying that because of the movie. But okay, cool. I think I gave you some when you came to visit. Me Probably. In Texas. I remember I you... be wrong. You no, know, I think you're right, actually, because you, you had a specific one you wanted me to try. Anyway, let's uh, let's kick this thing off by talking about the mean one. Alrighty. So the mean one is a film from 2022, based on based really on the 2000s Grinch movie starring Jim Carrey, which we discussed last Christmas. The film sort of proposes this like alternate universe scenario where instead of like. Learning to become good and, and learning to love Christmas, learning the value of Christmas. The Grinch instead accidentally kills a woman and is even more shunned by society and becomes a homicidal maniac. And also it's not actually the Grinch, it's a legally distinct character called the Mean One. And he, he doesn't live in Whoville, he lives outside of Newville, California even though Whoville is famously in Michigan. And and all the people in the town are just like regular human beings and not Who's at all. So and, uh, the result of this is that the Grinch murders anyone he perceives as celebrating Christmas. But it also seems at a few points throughout the film that he, he can f sort of force people to celebrate Christmas if he... If he wants to, just just so he has an excuse to murder them, I don't know. It kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. And uh, uh, meanwhile, Cindy, you know who, uh, is 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 training to fight back. She's the one whose mother got killed, and she's out for revenge on the mean one. Um, and she she falls in with this Jewish police officer. Who has to remind you every like 20 minutes that he's Jewish <laughs> and does not celebrate Christmas. And they have a bit of a romance going. Uh, Michael, what did you think of the mean one? I think in concept it's actually a way better idea than Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Because I feel like that movie is very much just marketed off the fact 
um, Winnie the Pooh's in the public domain now. I consider that to be kind of a lame thing to do. It's not that, like, I, I, I get why someone would do that, but to me that's, like, when I see, like, oh, we're doing a slasher Winnie the Pooh, the year Winnie the Pooh becomes public domain, that's all I'm thinking of is, okay, yeah, you're you're marketing something. It, it's purely a marketing tactic, and it worked. They made all their money back. It was a commercial success because uh, it was a very low-budget movie. So I, I saw that one, and I didn't really like the idea behind it. Comments on the quality of the movie coming up later. Uh, with the mean one, I actually did like the idea because it feels like how... Like, something like Five Nights at Freddy's was kind of like, you know, early to making like something horror based on how unsettling animatronics was, something from childhood, something that, you know, wasn't supposed to be unsettling that was. I feel very much like the mean one is kind of taking that idea of the creepy high like live action hybrid movies that came out around that time where like they had to try to make like all these cartoon characters live action and so many of them were just so unsettling or terrifying and i could imagine it being creepy for a kid the grinch especially the grinch was especially creepy yeah because it wasn't just the makeup it was the lighting and i actually do think the who's i think the Who should have looked like themselves in this movie because I think the Who's were much creepier than the Grinch because at least the Grinch felt in character. At least Jim Carrey was work so expressive that he worked like behind all that makeup. Where uh, the Who's, they just look fucking unsettling. <laughs> but anyways, uh, despite me liking the idea behind it, I uh, really do not like the execution. I think that they like really like I, I think just basic things they got wrong. Color grid and wasn't consistent. The sound no, mixing was almost so bad. The sound mixing was really shit in this movie. There were scenes where there is, like, you see someone, like, slamming against something or, like, stepping into the ground. It's like they didn't even put a sound effect there. Like, they didn't do... It's mistakes that you would see, like, a high school student make, you know? I... I l let me Let me put it this way. I think I have seen, like, one movie with worse color grading, and it was a Channel Awesome movie. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. It was really bad, like, really poorly made movie to give it what I can give it credit for, and there's really not a lot. I do think that the makeup on the Grinch was done pretty well. I think the actor playing as the Grinch is, like, working with it pretty well. Like, it's expressive just like the Jim Gary, Gary Grinch. I think the biggest mistake they made in that aspect, though, is instead of speaking, the Grinch just makes, uh demon sounds and it's like oh my god you could have had so much fun with this you're the one who pointed this out when we were watching yesterday they could have given him all the given him all these like campy jim carrey lines where it's like i he like he killed someone and then he kind of mugged to the camera and i'm like like i was almost expecting some like jim carrey style quip after that and i'm like if they could have just thrown in a few quips in here, like they don't even have to be good. They could all be absolute groaners, but it would be something. Right. And I, I yeah, I think that would have been very entertaining because I, I, I think like it would have been stupid, but you already have a stupid idea here. And I know I like, I like the idea because it's based on something that was legitimately creepy. Well, I understand why they would make a horror movie out of this. Um, there is, like, an idea there. Because, again, it's not making a horror movie out of the original Grinch, like you said before. It's specifically going for the live-action one. And the costume looks like the live-action one, just a little creepier. Yeah. I, I think, and, yeah, they did make it look creepier. I think they did a good job in that regard, too. And I, 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 think, they, I think they got the aesthetic dead on with that one. They did, and I'm, I'm very impressed with them, and I'm very impressed with the guy they had working with all that makeup on but the demons i like maybe they thought it would, wouldn't be scary them but the demon noises aren't scary either that's so fucking lame uh and the thing is like i feel like there's so much potential to do fun stuff with this idea i feel like there is like a lot of things they could have done i think that this movie should be taking the grinch story and making the one difference that he took the shit he got in the past a lot more personally than the jim carrey one did like, he, he's still the character, but one that is just, like, not, oh, I want to go into the town and fuck with people. Oh, I want to go into that town and, f like, fucking murder people, you know? And I think that would uh, work better. There's a couple of tropes from the movie that they use in a different way that I, I kind of liked, but I, I still don't love their execution. Like, he dies from his heart growing and exploding. I like that in terms of, like, a stupid way to end the movie. I don't like how they did it, though. 
And another one is there's a like scene where he's like tiptoeing on the ground near the end, kind of like he does in the both the cartoon and the live action movie with his fingers. Yeah. I'm like, that's cute. I like that. But they that's like it's so far and few in between when you get a moment like that, you know? Yeah, I if they had like really leaned into the cartoonier aspects of the character, I I think the movie would be like greatly improved. Right. Cause yeah, where it sits, it's just uh I really hated it. Like I, I mean, I'm, I, <laughs> I feel bad because I, I will say with both this and uh, Blood and Honey, they almost they feel like student movies to me. It feels like these are some like really young people just getting into the industry trying to make something. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe they're very experienced and they just didn't give a shit. But I, I get the vibe that this is being made by younger filmmakers, and uh, I don't know, like. Again, I think there's, like, a few things done well. It's not, like, it's not in the bottom ten of what we watch, but, like, while I was watching this, I think I was getting a lot more frustrated than that did. I, I did not like it. Yeah, I, I, I didn't really like it either, but I kind of got the sense that I was enjoying it more than you were. Because <laughs> I was, I was at the very least not bored by this movie. I think there are a lot of movies we've looked at on this show that are just so boring yeah and this one i'm like nah nah it holds my interest for the most part for the most part there's definitely parts where it drags its feet but yeah for the most part i'm okay with this i the 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 kills are just not very good in this no they they suck they look really bad like, uh, okay, there's a few i think look really bad most of them i'm just kind of like okay that was nothing Mm -hmm. that was that was like we had no money to actually put a kill here sorry uh the one it's and i will say it's almost like the ones where it's like they are trying a little harder are the ones that look really bad so you can say like it's either a budget thing or an inexperienced thing because there's like a scene where they like put a woman into like it, it's not a wood chipper what is it again it's something like that uh meat grinder meat grinder right because they're at the restaurant. That look, that might be the worst looking one in the entire movie. Because it's just like CG blood coming out of there. I'd say the worst effect in the movie. And it's only the worst one because there is no way in hell they needed to do it like this. Is there scenes where they're looking at pictures that the Grinch was photoshopped into? <laughs> And it looks oh horrible. God. It looks horrible. I'm going to bring up the fucking high school thing again. It looks like a fucking like high school student's Photoshop project. You know, it's it's horrible. <laughs> there, there was no... You couldn't have just gone out into the woods and taken some actual photographs of people with the Grinch actually in the back... Excuse me. The mean one actually <laughs> in the background. I like I swear there's one where he's behind a tree and he's too big for how far away he is. <laughs> like it's like he shouldn't be that far away if you're making him that large. It's it's it like and he's like completely uncolor like color corrected to fit the scene. The lighting does not work at all in the pictures they used of him. Like it was it had about the same level as like an edit that me or you will put into like <laughs> Mackel and Zatch or uh, Matt and the gang where it's supposed to be like a shit post, you know? I mean, it's 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 on par with like the picture in Left Behind where they just like Photoshop Nick Cage in with the rest <laughs> of his family. <laughs> like you, you couldn't have just taken a picture of that, right? Come just on, do, I, I don't. Yeah, most of the kills are pretty forgettable to me for the most part. But then there's like the really shit ones. Like I, there's one where like the Grinch like stomps on a woman's head to death, and that one looked really bad. I there's a there's a weird one where he like shoves a woman's head. It, it's the mayor actually. He puts the mayor's head down and then like slams the the trunk of a car down on her head which i thought was just to like bash her head in but then you see like her decapitated head roll over onto the ground and i'm like that is not what would happen but okay right <laughs> <laughs> he he tries to strangle her with like a string of like vote for me stickers and i'm like that would rip easily yeah right like those things are designed to tear very easily <laughs> Isn't there a shot in the Grinch movie where he, like, uh, uses his finger to cut through glass? Like, the actual Grinch movie. And it's like, oh, he has, like, a razor-sharp finger. Like, why didn't they do anything with that on this? 
That would have been a good callback. That would have been like he split someone's stomach open. That would be because that would be like way too fucking much for them to do. Um, that's something that like you can see something like that in Shaun of the Dead. You're not going to see them do that in this. Because this movie is really only willing to go so far with the special effects. Uh, we should talk about some of the people he kills. You mentioned the mayor, but like there's the one scene where it's just like the movie is almost trying to justify his hatred for Christmas by just having the douchiest group of people all dressed as Santa show up near yeah, this bar. They're, com- they're coming from SantaCon <laughs> or they're going to SantaCon. I don't know. One of the two. Yeah. And all of them suck. All of them are just fucking <laughs> awful. Like, very blatantly, like, right away. Like, the second they en- the second they enter the movie, you're aware, okay, these people exist to die. <laughs> um, I, I want to talk about, like, there's, there's the one dude who just, like, accidentally gets shipped some... <laughs> Christmas decorations and and immediately the Grinch is there to be like nuh-uh-uh, I'm gonna murder you just for having these uh, he rang them you know, he shouldn't have rang them and then, and then when the, the like the mayor's car stalls out and then it starts playing Christmas music on the radio and it's like is the Grinch doing this? Is this a pow- like he does he have the power to force people to celebrate Christmas even though his whole thing is killing people who celebrate Christmas? Like she deserved it, but like right. I feel like that was kind of a stretch. Yeah, that was a stretch and it's kind of like uh okay, if what you know, if she had the self-awareness to be terrified when the Christmas music played and that many people are dying just off like a slight Christmas reference in the house, why wasn't the guy panicking when he got that delivery? <laughs> he should be aware of that. He should be aware that's a thing. He should have just been, <laughs> he let anyway, pulls them out of the box and starts ringing them while he's talking on the phone. Yeah, no, the Grinch's rules are fucking bullshit, though. Um, I think probably the biggest load of shit in this movie... And it's, like, not even something I can get that worked up over because it's, like, yeah, it's a poorly written script. I, I'm not I'm not surprised they went this route at all. But they try to make him, at the end, he wasn't, like, evil. He was misunderstood. But he fucking murdered a lot of people. <laughs> and um, and yeah. almost all of them were innocent. Like, the mayor, the mayor and the one corrupt cop character both deserved it. But everyone else was just fucking mind in their own business and and from the start the implication is like oh in the grinch story he got the happy ending because he learned how good christmas was and this is this is if he never learned how good christmas was and just became a murderer instead but also like and yeah like you say it's like uh even using the oh but it's because he got attacked in the house it was still a home invasion (laughs) Like, so there is no level where you can take him as being sympathetic. The reason that he gets to turn it around at the, in like the initial story is because one, he doesn't get caught by an adult <laughs> and two, he does, he like, he, he, you know, sees the error of his way and apologize for it. But another thing is I don't think in the actual story, they established the Grinch. And I know it's really weird to like actually try to compare this to the original story, but they like, but it's like, you know, the parents, like the, the adults in the world are fucking terrified of him. So they're probably not going to try to fight him. I don't know though. They're, that's trying to bring way too much fucking logic into this. It's just very dumb that they try to go the sympathetic route at the end. I like, in <sighs> In a, in, a, in a weird way, I actually think that's something that the movie we're going to talk about does better, even though it doesn't, like, do it nearly the same way this movie does it. But yeah, like, I, th- yeah. I thought that was a really stupid ending. Like, I thought that was an especially stupid ending. And it, it, there, again, like, maybe if the whole movie was super campy, they could have found a way to work, make it work. But uh, I, I really don't think they did. I think, honest to God, the heart growing too many sizes and killing him is an acceptable way to go an ironic twist on it, but it's also just like, I think it either had to be, either it needed to be something like them doing something intentional or something else causing it. In terms of, like, usually we'll go through the cast. I feel like in this, we kind of just have to go character by character because in terms of cast, I think the only notable person, the only person really worth mentioning 
is uh, David Howard Thornton, who plays the mean one. Uh, who is, of course, also famous for playing Art the Clown in the Terrifier movies. So he's like an, an established slasher uh, uh, villain. Incidentally, he he was in the official How the Grinch Stole Christmas the Musical huh. as, as one of the Who's, <laughs> which is interesting. But uh, he, he plays the mean one in this, and... I mean, he he does a good enough job, but uh, again, it's it's the writing. It's I wish he did some like Jim Carrey quips. He's got the mannerisms down, man. Like he he will mug to the camera, and it's like, oh yeah, that's something Jim Carrey would have done. That's something I can see the Jim Carrey Grinch doing. I looked up. Um, I'm looking up some of these people from the cast. I looked up Amy Rose Schumacher, who. Was the mayor, but also had her, like, name on uh, the movie. Yeah, she was a producer. Yeah. I looked up what else she's done, and it's, like, I will say only two of, like, her projects have a poster attached to them on Google. <laughs> one is the mean one, and the other one is, guess what else she has come out that, that came out this year? A 2023 what? dark and gritty retelling of the Powerpuff Girls. That, oh. That oh. has some of the same people from the mean one in it. Hold on, wait. Powerpuff Girls The Long Way Back? Yeah, I think it's like a 22-minute movie. It's not like a full-fledged yeah. film. That's, fr- that's from the director of The Mean One. Who directed The Mean One, anyway? Steven Lamorte. Gotcha. So yeah, I guess that's just their shtick right now. Uh, Crystal Martin as uh, Cindy. Felt like a Lifetime movie actor to me, honestly. I She's kind of got like a... Like a Ronda Rousey thing going on. Mm-hmm. Like, sh- I mean, it, she has, like, the whole training montage, and by the end she's like, oh, I'm, like, the badass strong woman. Well, it's funny because she she is, like, I, I looked up her other work. She's, she's like, a stunt double in a lot of stuff. Yeah. She's, she kind of looks like Ronda Rousey to me, though. My favorite part of her character was how frequently, she, like, does the police keep fighting against her and what she's trying to do? My favorite part was how often she said, I'm not doing anything illegal. When literally one of the things that she did before saying that was saying she was going to murder someone. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it was the Grinch, but it's still like, you're not allowed to tell a police officer that you're going to kill someone. <laughs> Just saying that can get yeah. you in trouble. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I don't know, like, I... All the fucking acting in this movie is trash, except for the, again, except for the Grinch. But I, I feel kind of bad. Like, this this script we talked about, the dialogue is some of the most unnatural dialogue I've ever seen in a movie before. Oh, the, the dialogue in this is fucking terrible. You you want to know what the, the writer of this movie did before this? What did he do? Four straight-to-video Disney sequels. Like, some of the most hated, but also Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, which is, like, generally regarded as, like, a better one. You know what's fucking insane, Matt? The second I looked up one of the actors, Flip Cobbler, who plays the dad, you know what popped up under his movies? Four direct-to-video Disney movies. He is is the writer. He is the writer I was referring to. He also plays the dad in the movie. Oh, okay. That was just fucking perfect time and like I, I the second i clicked on it, i saw those four movies pop up when you said that yeah he wrote those and he plays the dad in this and he also wrote this one the yeah. other the other three he made were pocahontas 2 uh beauty and the beast enchanted christmas so this is actually his second christmas movie and yeah. the hunchback of notre dame i mean i really liked lion king 2 when i was a kid but i mean looking back at it it's not really a well-written movie <laughs> it's no I mean, it's good by, like, Disney straight-to-DVD standards, but, uh... It ha- they definitely put a little bit more love into that one because of what it was a sequel to. But it was still, On the uh... other hand, uh... <laughs> anyway. Like, like Hunch- Hunchback of Notre Dame 2 is considered, like, one of the absolute worst. Yeah. Yeah. No, he did five of them. He did Lady and the Tramp 2 as well. Did he? Yeah, I mean, it's at least listed here. Maybe he wasn't, like, the lead writer or anything but he he has involvement in it i loved that movie when i was a kid i have not revisited it since i was like seven years old though so i that that probably explains a lot 
Beauty and the Beast, the Christmas one, I think I saw. I never saw Pocahontas 2. I've only heard things about Hunchback and Notre Dame, but I know it's, like, considered one of the worst ones that were <laughs> that they did. Yeah, I don't know. The Chase Mullins as the cop. I, he's, like, trying to deliver lines comedically because he has a lot of funny lines. Like, he, you know, like, mentioning that he celebrates Hanukkah over and over and lying about making his own soup. Like, he's... They're trying to make him quirky, and he's trying to follow that up, but... It's just a really bad script. It's hard to, like, I wouldn't want to, I would feel guilty judging any of the, what these people are capable of performing based on the script. Because I don't know if I could do any fucking better with, like, a script like this. I think I could play it up and make it, like, more obvious that I'm not taking it seriously, but I think that's the best I could do. <laughs> um, to yeah. me, I didn't really, to me, there's not really anyone else noteworthy, but... The the one other thing I really wanted to talk about with this movie is there there's like a, a website that's encouraging people to go like hiking in the mountains around the around Newville. Which first off, hold on, can we talk about the name Newville? It's fucking dumb. Like there were there were plenty of ways you could have done your own Whoville. Like, spell it H-O-O. H-O-O-Ville. Whoville. I, I also feel like if Come you had on. to change the word, why why go with new? That's just, I don't know, that's stupid. Yeah, no, I, it would have been funnier to be like, Whereville, or Whatville. Yeah. So there's, there's a website for Newville that's encouraging people to go hike around the mountains, and this is played as like, a weird twist where like, Oh, they were luring people to, like, feed the mean one so that he wouldn't come into town and kill the townsfolks. And it's like a big twist that the city's website is being run by the mayor. And I'm like, it's the city's website. Who else would it be run by? Like, what are you talking about? Of course the city's website is run by the mayor. Yeah, no, it's... Just another weird decision this movie made. Yeah. Gotta say, a Newville, not not a super impressive city. They use the same, like, flyover stock footage of a city twice in the opening of the movie. Oh my god, yeah. They, the, the fucking, they, they just like flat out didn't, there's so many, uh, there's so many other things. Go ahead, I'm sorry. There, there's, here's the thing, there's clearly some, like stock footage in this movie but they do for the most part a good enough job hiding it like it looks enough like the rest of the footage from this film but they do they kind of overuse it in spots because they will play like the same shot two or three times they yeah it, it's very amateur feeling a lot of the time another thing that i noticed and to be fair they don't they don't do this throughout. It's only in a couple scenes, but they have like these really shitty overlays put over the screen at times too, where like it's supposed to add like a bit of a lens flare or something to the shot. But then if the shot cuts, it'll still be playing the same one uncut. So it's like, okay, this isn't actually part of the scene. This isn't actually like, you're not trying to create the illusion that this is going on in the scene. It's just like little things like that that I'm seeing where it's like this, that's what makes it feel like it's like, Either high school or college, you know, someone inexperienced making this because it just doesn't feel like that paired with like how often they do the stock footage and all of that. It's just like it's not it's not a well-crafted movie at all. Um, and I, I, that's why I feel like this like and like the other one we're going to talk about, they both feel like student movies to me. Where if you saw, like, someone in your class, like, make this, I think you'd even be a little bit impressed, like, just like, oh, this is just a s one guy who got together some buddies and made this. That's neat. But it's something that's, like, I don't even know if the mean one got played in theaters. I know that um, Blood and Honey did. But it's something that you're paying to see as something that you're, like, that's a actually out there. It's, like, this is, like, like really as, like, almost as bad as it gets. There's worse looking movies that we've talked about on the show, like, and I think a big part of it, though, is, like, I think this one stands out more in how badly it's made because it is trying to do stuff. It is actually trying to do some stuff visually to the movie. It's just they don't either don't have the resources or don't have the experience to make it work. 
So where something like Ben and Arthur, if they were to try all this, I'm sure it would look worse, you know? But Ben and Arthur isn't trying to do shit like this movie's trying to do. So it's like a lot more, to me, it's a lot more noticeable in something like this, just how poorly it's made. Yeah. Mostly on a technical scale. Like, again, like there's, again, the, the makeup on the Grinch, I, I think they did a solid job of that. I have one more thing to talk about with this film. Do you have anything else? Nope. I'm ready to move on. Okay. I got a bitch about the fucking Blu-ray for this movie. Oh, yeah, do it. Because uh, cause Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is on Peacock, and my roommate has Peacock, so I just used their Peacock to watch this, so I'm like, I don't want to make Michael wa- pay for both of these movies. I'll, I'll just get the Blu-ray for... Uh, uh, Winnie the uh, for for the mean one, and we can sort of you know screen share that. This Blu-ray, this cost me twenty five dollars. It is clearly just like burned onto a Blu-ray, like 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 a Blu-ray I could go to the store and buy to burn movies onto, right? S- whoever made this movie is burning their own Blu-rays. All it has on there is the movie and some deleted scenes. The the menu doesn't even... Like, it's a static shot on the menu. This is, like, the most bare-bones Blu-ray that you could put out there. And it was fucking $25. That's unreasonable. This should not be this expensive. Like, if, if I paid $10, $15 for this, I would not be bitching about it. I paid $25 for something you ripped on your computer. And, and... It started skipping while I was watching it, cause it's a cheap ass Blu-ray. Cause it's it's not even like a real Blu-ray. It's it's the type of Blu-ray you can write onto yourself. Just as like a reference, the most impressed I've ever been with a Blu-ray I had in terms of like how detailed the menu is and how many bonus features there are and how well implemented it all is. Like the Into the Spider Verse Blu-ray, very well made Blu-ray, very quality pro- uh, product. Eleven dollars. <laughs> yeah. And that one has like hours upon hours of bonus features. It has the entire movie presented in a different way. It has like a menu where like it, as you're moving it, like the just like moving button to button, it like there's an animation for it, you know, like little animations. It's like just a very well made Blu-ray. Um eleven dollars. <laughs> Shitty Blu-ray. Do better. Yeah. Or at least or at least charge less. Right. I don't I don't really expect more out of the mean one Blu-ray, but at least charge less for it. For sure. Christ. Ah, uh, would you like to introduce Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey for us? Yeah, so Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey released this year, uh directed by Reese Waterfield and also written by him tells the story of Christopher Robin and his fiance revisiting the Hundred Acre Woods after he left it years ago, uh, only to see that Pooh and the others have become very different since the last time we saw them. They're now not, the, like, they're not only now the size of a human, which I don't know if it was established that that's what they looked like before. Like, I don't, they just kind of managed to grow into human bodies. And I also say the uh, Pooh and the others, Piglet's the only other one who shows up. Yeah, they're fucking murderers now and the movie writes off the wife or fiance and it seems like christopher robin's getting written off super early too like that's just the opening of the movie where we then focus on five girls going into the woods going into the cabin for a camping trip and i will say the movie gets straight to the point with that there is not a lot of scenes of them like bonding or enjoying uh their trip It, it pretty much almost immediately goes to them getting murdered Although our main female lead has, like, you know, she's going on this trip because of something troubling from her past, something that recently happened that she's trying to get away from. Although you almost don't need that in the movie at all, because I feel like it pl- pays absolute, plays absolutely no relevance to the ending of the movie at all. I feel like it's brought up to maybe give her some character, but, like, I kind of expected it to be relevant to the ending in some way, or for her to at least get out of this experience alive. No... She's just kind of killed off like any other character in the movie. I don't really get what they were going for with this movie character-wise, but uh, there you have it. Matt, what do you think of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey? I mean, it is a vastly better made movie than the mean one. It's still not very good. I, I, I'll say this. 
I'm impressed with both of these movies for going practical with it. Like, I could very easily imagine someone doing, like, some really shitty CG poo and piglets in this. But no, no, they have real, like, masks in this. And those masks get quite messy throughout the film. Is he... He cries Winnie the Pooh cries honey in this film. Honey is kind of like right. his tears, snot, and drool. Like, yeah, it's coming out of all of his holes, you know? Yeah, that's kind of weird. It's also weird that the film, like, sets up Rabbit and Owl. Not Tigger. Tigger's not there. They, I mean, they also set up Eeyore. They set up Eeyore, too, but Eeyore, like, gets killed in, the like, the opening of the film. And... <laughs> Like, those characters just never come back. It's it's Pooh and Piglet the whole time. It's just, yeah, I'm with you. I don't know what they were going for with this. This feels like a, an extremely unfocused film. It feels like the idea was Winnie the Pooh slasher, and they never thought about it past that. Yeah. Like, that is that is where the thought process begins and ends. I will definitely agree with you that it's a better made movie. Like, lighting was better. Sets were better. Shots, shot composition was better. There was a couple shots in this movie I thought looked pretty nice. I think the lighting was good in a lot of it. And then there were some scenes where it's like, there's like so much, it's like, they had a lot of shots where there was just like a ton of light flashing down from the sky. And in some shots it looked cool and in other shots it looked very weird. But, uh, for the most part, I would say it was, like, a well-lit movie. I think that the Grinch, appearance of the Grinch is so much better than how they did Pooh and Piglet. Pooh is better than Piglet. Piglet looks like a Halloween, like a mask they got at a Halloween store. Pooh is a lot more designed around Winnie the Pooh as a character. And they were able to make the mask emote a little bit, although a lot of that was probably CG. Like, the expression change in. I'm sure a lot of that was helped with CG. But they did have it so the lips could move. They did have it so he could, like, look pissed off or, or not really sad, but they had the honey tears, like you mentioned. Grinch was definitely a better... That's the only thing I'd say Grinch did better, like, is the costume for the Grinch was, like, pretty well made and Pooh. Hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. think the Pooh costume is good at all. The mask is memorable, I would say. Like, it's still in my head. I remember what it looks like. And, and some of this being, like, better made might come down to budget. Like, it's clear, like, clearly this is low budget, but it's clear this had more money behind it than the mean one. Yeah. Throughout a lot of it, it's like, the way you, you look at it and it's like, okay, this is acceptable. There's a few moments where I feel like, okay, th this is starting to look like the mean one, especially the scene where they're, like, running over the one girl's head with the tire. Um, that looked like right out of the mean one to me. But aside from that one, the kills all looked a lot better. Although most of them were just kind of like, they did do a good job hiding, <laughs> hiding shit. But it, yeah, it did work out it, better. It, like, there, there are no kills in this that I would be like, oh, that was like a really good kill. They are all better than the kills in, in the mean one. <laughs> right. There are plenty of uh, slasher movies that I've seen that are, like, wildly accepted by people where the characters are acting equally stupid um, and the kills are equally impressive. So it's, like, it's not that bad, I would say, but it's certainly not something that I think there's, like, anything that would ever warrant a rewatch or even really a first watch unless you're just, like, so curious to see a legal Winnie the Pooh slasher, you know, like something that's like allowed to play in theaters. Like, I think that's the novelty that got people interested in it. And that's the novelty that they went for. I don't think that they really, I don't think there is a lot of passion behind this. I just think that the people who made it yeah. are better at making movies. I think that they had a, I think they had a worse idea than the mean one, but they just knew what they were doing. Yeah. Like Winnie the Pooh has never been a scary character. Really? Not not outside of, like, you know, like, uh, internet memes where the joke is kind of like, haha, we're doing a fucked up version of Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Like, I, I sent you that, that comic of, like, Pooh about to eat Piglet that's, like, I, like, this whole movie, right from the get-go, this movie was reminding me of that. This does open on, like, 
a fairly decent animated opening. I think the opening scene is, like, interesting. Mm -hmm. Even if the story it presents, like, you were comparing it to, like, early internet uh, uh, creepypastas. Yeah. And I see it. I see it. It's the kind of thing that I would have been into when I was 14. Honestly, if I saw this movie when I was 14, I think I would have, like, said, oh, that's pretty cool. Because I liked to, I liked shit like that. It's like Squidward Suicide. It's a fucking, there's a VHS tape that exists of this band episode. This one's more like the, if you leave your Pokemon game unattended, the Pokemon will fucking hate you when you turn it back on. They're going to fucking murder your character and you're going to have to just sit there and watch. And that's, I, I get that like the whole thing of this is like, oh, Winnie the Pooh is public domain now. So let's make like a fuck you Disney movie. <laughs> out of it. Yeah. But uh I feel like this is almost like a decade and a half too late. Cuz like the people were doing shit like this on the internet in yeah. like 2008. <laughs> Literally the only novelty is that it's allowed to be played in a theater. That's like it. And that's how 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 much is that actually worth? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, you're you're allowed to do this now because, like, public domain. You're, you're allowed to, for the... This is allowed to be, like, an official Winnie the Pooh movie. But, I, yeah, no, like, Winnie the Pooh slasher movie sounds like the setup for a Newgrounds animation. Why not, with it being in the public domain, if you want to do something with the IP... Make a fucking Winnie... I mean, like, make a fucking Winnie the Pooh movie, then. You could, like... People like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> you could make something that someone would buy. Make something family-friendly that someone would buy. But I, I get why they did this. And again, it worked. I can't really... From a business... From what they were trying to accomplish, I can't say they failed. Because I think they were well aware they weren't making anything great with this. I think they knew that people would buy into this. Uh, and they wouldn't have to spend that much money making it. And yeah, like, a lot of people called it out. A lot of people said it was stupid. A lot of people were angry that it existed. But enough people went and saw it. Enough because it's like... Oh, there's... It's a novelty movie. There's so much hate for this movie. Yeah. This this is on uh, the Letterboxd Anti-Top 250. The oh, yeah? Anti Letterboxd 250. It, it is one of the lowest rated movies on Letterboxd. I think the one thing that holds me back from, like, it being one of those movies that I nah, really hate. This is, this is the ninth lowest. Okay, that's too low. Uh, yeah. This is the ninth lowest rated movie on, on Letterboxd. I don't even know if it belongs on there. I mean, I get why. Again, I get why it's on there, because it's, like, a notable one, too. But it's, like, comparing it to stuff that we've watched on the show, too. Like, I mean... It's not that poorly made. It's not like it's not like it's super well made and that like oh redeems so much of what it did. No, it's it's not that bad. It, it's not. It's by no means good. This is not an endorsement for the movie. I re like I said, premise wise, I don't like it. I I respect the mean one more than this on that level. But in terms of how they executed it, yeah, like they're I I unlike the mean one, I wasn't bored watching this one because I feel like it got straight to the point. You get to see a lot of the creepy Winnie the Pooh in it more so than what the Grinch does. Um, I think the score was okay at points. There was part where the music, I think, worked in the scenes it was used in. Like, the music was... They had some, like, emotional music near the end and some creepy music during, like, the car cha the car scene that was like, okay, like, I'm... I'm this actually doesn't sound that bad. But as a whole, it's just kind of like... Yeah, it's still not good. But I, I definitely think there's so much worse shit out there. There's worse shit that we've covered out there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I think there's maybe a little too much backlash to this one. It's not that bad. Not that it's particularly good either. Just... It's, it's like, mildly competent. Yeah. I, I do feel like I have a lot less to say about this one than the mean one, though. This one, this one, it's kind of exactly what, what it says on the tin. It's like, hey, you want to see a slasher movie where the villain is Winnie the Pooh and Piglet? Here you go. Congrats. Yeah. And I also don't think that, like, where the mean one, I feel like there was a lot of missed opportunity. I don't really think there is 
a lot of missed opportunity. Like, I feel like it... What else were you going to do with this? I guess show other Winnie the Pooh characters. That's, like, the only missed opportunity, really. And even then, like, that's not going to do a lot for it. <laughs> Especially when Piglet really didn't look anything like Piglet. It was just a pig mask. Yeah. There was nothing stylized about that costume. I would say for Pooh, they, they stylized it. Made it look like a creepy, deformed Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. God, can can we talk about the ending of this movie? Yeah, go for it. Because it just kind of stops. Yeah. Like Winnie the Pooh, or excuse me, Christopher Robin shows up, tries to kill Winnie the Pooh, fails, and then he's like, wait, Pooh, stop killing people. I promise I'll take care of you. I'll, I'll, I'll stay with you guys forever. Just stop killing people. And then Pooh's like, no, you left, and then murders the girl, and and then the movie just ends. Christopher Wa- Wa- uh, Robin does, I almost said Christopher Walken, Christopher Robin does seem to <laughs> have gotten away. Like, he do- it seems like the implication is he is alive still. Yeah. I find it funny, too, because he gives, like, an emotional speech saying, you saved me, now it's my turn to save you. And then Pooh just fucking stabs her after that. I I, I kind of, like, gave the film props for a second because I was like, I did not expect them to kill her. I thought she was the one who got to live. Oh, my God. And then it kind of just sunk with me that it's like, what the fuck was the point of her character? They established something with her at the start of the movie. Maybe something that a lot of horror movies do, a lot of slasher movies do, where the main character has a problem that, like, they almost learn to overcome it because of something way more traumatizing, you know? Um, And this movie just, like, it's kind of like... They have a therapy scene talking about it, and then a scene with her talking about it with her friends. And But th- because it goes nowhere, it's like, why did you need those two scenes? What was the point of it? Like, nothing happened with her character. The character went through no arc. The character, like, she just dies like everyone else does. Yeah. Christopher Robin doesn't really go through much of an arc. He just keeps repeating the same shit, which, I mean, to be fair, in that situation, what else are you going to do? But, like, there is no arc at all for anyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, none of none of the characters are really all that interesting, including Christopher Robin. He at least has, like, something going on, but really it's just his connection to the characters. There's nothing outside of that. And, and, just, you know, to sort of dip our feet into the cast here... The guy who plays him, Nikolai Leon, not a very good job. Can't really hold on to the British accent he's trying to do. No, and uh, this is a problem that a lot of people in these movies have, but very bad fake crier. Um, (laughs) That's not an easy thing to do, mind you. Like, I feel like even in, like, you know, major Hollywood productions, the crying is bad. I mean, the fucking It movie, that was huge, and that movie had underreactions like crazy in it. They want the little boy got his like hand, ar- like arm bitten off, and he's reacting to like reacting it like he got a splinter or something. Again, like that's just an issue that a lot of these movies have normally with children. But but yeah, horrible fake crier. <laughs> Did not seem that upset that his wife died. No, yeah, I the 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 main character Maria. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't really have much else to say about the actresses in this movie. They're fine, but they're not, like, good. No. The only one that I can think of mentioned is, like, the one that was, like, uh, Natasha Tassini, I think that's her name. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the last name right. Yeah, where she just had, like, I didn't even understand why she was on this trip. She didn't seem to like any of these people. And then there's just scenes of her, like, excessively long scenes of her taking Instagram photos. Of herself. Michael, I assure you, the entire scene of her (laughs) taking pictures of herself in a bikini to a pop song was absolutely necessary for the plot of the film. You're right, you're right. They also had a a sex person who was supposed to come and she gets killed uh, in the scene she's introduced on. And I kind of feel like they don't really acknowledge that she was supposed to be with them for the rest of the movie. Maybe there was a line acknowledging it. I don't remember. It's kind of just she's on the phone saying, I, I I can't I can't find the place. Can you call me back? Because they decided that they were all going to take their phones away before everyone got there. They kind of shot themselves in the foot. Um, but yeah, she just kind of never shows up and they're like, all right. Yeah. I mean, I feel like 
I feel like a lot of the characters in this, like, they get killed and you're just like, okay, that character's dead now, I guess. Like, like there's the, there's this crew of, like, Scottish dude, no, Australian dudes who just, like, show up at one point and Pooh starts killing them and it's like, we met these characters, like, five minutes ago. What the fuck? Very much like I did with the some of the people who worked on the mean one. You want to hear what the director of this movie is also working on? Uh, tell me about Pe- it. Peter Pan, Neverland, Nightmare, The Killing oh, Tree, boy. Easter Bunny, Massacre, The Legend of Jack and Jill, and the poster's Jack and Jill, and they have, like, they look very creepy, and they're holding weapons. Ooh. And also Dinosaur Hotel. Already... <laughs> We've already done Jack and Jill. We did Jack and the Jill uh, Giant Slayers. <laughs> Were they good guys in that and not slasher icons? I don't fucking remember. I didn't watch that. I probably won't unless you make me. Wait, no. No, I'm thinking of Jack and the Beanstalk, the Giant Slayer. My mistake. Uh, okay. Jack, Jack and Jill's a new one. It's actually an adaptation of uh, the Adam Sandler film, Jack and Jill. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, if this guy's having fun making the stuff, he's he's competent enough, I'll say that much. Like, it's, again, it's not like a horrible, yeah. horrible movie. I it's mean, not, this is... But you're also not making anything that, like, people are gonna love, and I think you know that. Yeah, both of these are very much part of, like, a kind of recent trend of, like, the kids thing, but a slasher movie. Right, like, it's it's right in there with, like, the Banana Splits movie, or, uh, Freaky, the Freaky Friday-inspired slasher, or even, like, Bring It On, Cheer or Die, just like, oh, we're gonna take this property and, and turn it into a slasher movie. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that edgy, y'all? Anything else to say about this one? No. Ready to, uh, pick a winner? Yeah, you you get first vote. Uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Like I said, I I kind of appreciate what the mean one was going for, but I just feel like they they executed it so poorly that I can't give the point to them. So yeah, Blood and Honey, it's like a pretty easy one for me. Uh, they're not like like I said, neither of them are in the bottom ten, and they're both in the bo- probably both in the bottom twenty for me. Yeah. Which- which is starting to mean something because we've 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 hit a fair number of movies <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Yeah, I, no, I I feel like there, there's definitely less to say about Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, but it's like a competent, slightly below average slasher where where the mean one is like way more amateurish. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like they tried harder with Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. I'd agree. And part of that might just, part of that might just be money. Part of that might just be that they had more money to throw at Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, but I e- e- either whatever it was like Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is certainly the better of the two. I don't think either of these are like good movies. No, <laughs> like just just because this movie is like the clear winner, uh, d- does not mean you should watch it. What did the audience say? Uh... Weirdly enough, the audience is against us on this one. It's 83% for the mean one versus 17% for Blood and Honey. Based on what we said, I... I kind of think that's people who saw Blood and Honey but not the mean one going like, Ah, fuck Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. That movie sucked. It's gotta be the mean one. Yeah, I, I think it's another... It's a vote against... Blank, not a vote for blank. Yeah. That happen- I think that happens a lot, honestly. Where it's like... Because the mean one's also like a little bit in like obscure territory, I feel. Like, Blood and Honey, everybody at least heard about. Um, I feel like the mean one, not like... It's out there, but... And I've heard people talk about... I've heard of its existence before you mentioned it for Hall of Victories, but... Uh, I, I think it's a way less heard of movie. I feel like more people are just going to be like, oh yeah, fuck Blood and Honey. What's the mean one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, we actually sat through the movies and 
Blood and Honey is like clearly the superior film. Blood and Honey wins. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey wins. Woo! All right. That's uh, that's the December episode out of the way. Uh, so so like famously, weirdly, I can't really explain why. Uh, videos just like don't do as well in January, but that to me is the perfect excuse. To do some completely random ass matchup that no one but me cares about. <laughs> I did right. it last year when I did Waterworld versus uh, 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 Southland Tales. Like, that was not an episode anyone but I cared about. And uh, this year we're gonna do it again. We're gonna watch some, like, obscure. A not, not obscure. Like, if you start talking about Star Wars ripoffs, these are probably gonna be, like, two of the first ones you hear about, but, like, some kind of niche Star Wars rip-offs. It's, uh, Battle Beyond the Stars versus Star Crash. I don't know if you've heard of either of these I, films. I, but, I haven't uh, heard of either of those, but, uh, I, I guess we'll see what I have to say. I'm already not a big Star Wars guy, so, like, I'm hoping that this isn't just gonna... <laughs> I'm hoping I'll have something I mean, to say, but I always I always have something to say. They, fine. <laughs> both both of these movies get like pretty fucking weird about it. All right, all right. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, fuck it has been a while since we've done anything that would like we did the we did do Turkish Star Wars. So yes, yeah, I feel like I feel like you got to get one Star Wars in every every year, right? Like we had. The, we had episode one for the first year of the show. Second year we had Turkish stars. Now, now we got this. All right. All right. Anything else? No. I did think that these two were at least interesting to talk about. I had fun doing this one. I mean, I always have fun doing the show, but it's like this one. Some, there's sometimes we hit a movie where it's like it hurt to watch. And now I'm just like re-experiencing it. <laughs> uh, where... This one, it was like, okay, this was at least like an intro. I think it was interesting to talk about these two because it's a very weird like phenomenon with them both too, of something that we're seeing yeah, a lot, I, a lot I don't, frequently. I don't think either of these movies are good. I don't think either of these movies are worth watching of their own accord, but it was absolutely worth watching both of these just to like sit down and talk about them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like it's a very modern thing too. Like it's like, a lot of the stuff that we talk about is, like, very reminiscent of, like, weird decision-making of, like, the past. Where this one, it's, like, this is, like, a very, like, ongoing thing. Like, we're gonna we're gonna get more horror movies like this, for sure. Yeah, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is the most recent movie we've discussed on the show. Yeah. It is, it is literally from 2023. Mean One was last year, so it's not too far behind, but yeah, this is the... I, I think that's probably... Probably the second most recent film we've discussed. It is the first time we're doing a movie that was released the year we're talking about it, right? I think so. I can't think of one that was. Yeah. yeah, no, it, it would appear that way, because after the mean one, the next most recent film is Hubie Halloween, and that was from 2020. Yeah, okay. Like, the, the year we... was 20, Did we start this in 2020, or did we start this in 2021? 2021. Okay, yeah. So yeah, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is the first film we're talking about the same year it released. Huh. Well, you made an impression, Blood and Honey. <laughs> <laughs> you got enough hate fast enough that we were able to talk of you about you by the end of the year. <laughs> uh, anyways, until next year, for my co-host movie, Mackle, I'm Matt Presents. See you in the next one. Peace. On earth, goodwill towards men. <laughs> <laughs>